I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. I've got three questions that I'd like to ask and um, concerning this whole royal uh, debacle that's going on right now, if you want to uh, call it that. But the first uh, thing I want to talk about is this whole Piers Morgan um, thing. Is this a generational um, attitude that we're seeing here or is that a is that a show that he's putting on or is it um, what what is it? What is causing that uh, so much divide along that uh, issue? So the idea today is to drill down on three questions. One, Piers Morgan. Two, Harry and Meghan. Three, Meghan. And the cards are going to go down that way too. So the first uh, deck that I use will be this uh, Albano Weight uh, Tarot for Piers Morgan. Then the New Paladini, which is a, a New Age Aquarian kind of interpretation for a New Age kind of Prince Harry and Meghan. And then to drill down just on Meghan, the um, really authentic Rider Waite Smith deck. And uh, that's how we'll go about it. So I've, had to, I've been thinking a lot about Piers Morgan. What in the world is driving this guy's uh, rage. I mean, really passionately felt rage. Or is that all an act? Is that um, is it good for his brand uh, to uh, have this uh, situation happen right now? And he knows, and as a shrewd uh, promoter, knows exactly when to make a move. Could be that, couldn't it? But it also looks like, I mean, if you just take a breath and step back and give everybody the benefit of the doubt, and if you're thinking about the Piers Morgan strategy, is that just a stiff upper lip kind of um, old uh, British uh, attitude versus now some kind of modern cancel culture, which the royals seem guilty in, a, in some odd twist. But um, then again, as Harry always really just brought it on himself, was this always going to be how Harry's story played out, no matter whom it was with? So we'll take a peek first at these amazing cards and see um, what we've got to look at. These are the Albano uh, weight tarot that um, have been colored more brilliantly than the typical tarot cards you see. And um, I don't know, it's just a kaleidoscope of art and color that uh, to me is like walking into, into a garden uh, in full bloom. Uh, why don't you want to take a minute and do that? Hmm? Why not? So we'll do a little bit of shuffle, cut the deck, and get right into the uh, read. See if we get some answers for Piers Morgan. Is that a stiff up the lip, old world, old uh, generational kind of a thing, versus uh, uh, the royals just saying, you know, enough is enough. We'll do the typical Celtic cross, well my typical Celtic cross, which is a little skewed, but then it is that way so that Hopefully it looks a little better on the camera in the small space that um, the TV card readers have to deal with. So these cards are really bright, so I hope they come out nice on the camera. And a one, two, three, four, five, six. That's all the cards. I always trust that they come together in exactly the way they should. The signifier for this, but the question, Piers Morgan, what is that all about? Is that uh, old um, way of thinking versus a modern way of thinking? Or was this always the way this was going to work out for Prince Harry? And that's kind of a loaded question and um, more weighted than uh, many people would say you should try to answer with a, a spread of tarot cards. But that's going to be it. Piers Morgan, uh, old versus new, or was it Harry's destiny that that was going to work out this way? The signifier card for this... <sighs> Is the nine of pentacles and this nine of pentacles i've got to tell you as we're starting this out this nine of pentacles is very satisfied very well taken care of you know everything is is not nothing is going to be hard um uh, this person is going to suffer for want of anything 
Okay, they're draped in, in from beautiful clothes. They have every uh, tool or toy that would be the modern uh, rage of the time, which in this case, I guess, is the Falcon. And um, so almost looks a little bored. So I wonder if we're talking a little bit about Harry. The challenge to that signifier for this question, remember, we're trying to talk about, so this, this, this Piers Morgan, I'll quit if you don't support the Royals versus the modern uh, kind of uh, disposable uh, nature of emotion. And, uh, did, but the Royals seemed to be guilty of that. Or was Harry always going to, was it always going to work out this way for Harry? The challenge to that is three of cups. And, you know, the Three of Cups just talks to us about uh, celebrations and uh, an emotional situation shared by several people. And um, so if this has got to be Harry over here as a signifier, and if it is, and we just have going to have to go with that. And so now we're going in the direction was it always going to be like this for Harry, no matter how he, he married or whatever. Uh, then we got to talk about Harry versus just this merry um, tr tr trio of celebrations, which look, this could even be William and Kate and Harry at one time. It could just represent uh, the royal situation. Let's see what the base of this reading is. What's the base of this reading? The base of this reading is the Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups is um, has got to be um, Diana. What The Queen of Hearts. What else? What else could it be? So is that what is coloring this whole change? And, you know, you can't say it was it was it was Diana that made the change. It was just the way that the change was always going to go. But uh, here, this Queen of Cups is bathed in a sea and a sky and an, a wardrobe and, and even the cup of blue uh, against this immensely fertile green throne. So that's the base of the reading. The recent past for this for this reading, then, is the greedy merchant uh, is just an easy way to think about this card. But this 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 institution has been very successful, and all of its trophies are on display, and and all of those trophies have been hard won emotionally. You want to think about Queen Elizabeth, who's in the uh, in uh, what she's gone through in just her lifetime. Okay, then you want to talk about how it is that she's there, what her father. Uh, went through with the war and then before that how the uh, the uh, that royal position was really thrust on him why because of an emotional situation from his brother who wanted to have uh, his love with him by his side for whatever reason uh, selfish or practical or foolish but that was uh, so the cup just seems to be repeating itself over and over and over and over again for this greedy merchant who is so foolish just to sit there and um, and bathe in that um, in that uh, self-imposed glory. Uh, in the sky for this reading, then, is the Queen of Pentacles. And that's what it's about uh, uh, in this issue. And it has always been uh, the issue. The, the pinnacle is something of uh, immense worth. And this Queen of Pentacles is going to hold on to that and uh, nourish it. And uh, the immense worth that the royals have is how they're perceived by the public. So that's the Queen of Pentacles in this situation. And the uh, outcome for this first part is that this is the Ten of Wands and it's just a heavy load but look, it's perfectly organized, and they've figured out how to move it on, and it's always been a task, and it always will be a task. So what is this saying so far to me? I think that this was always going to be the way Harry's life was going to work out due to his position in the lineage, and of course the fact that his mother um, was taken out of the picture so soon. The foolishness of the, of the uh, uh, overindulgence of the royal family, with all the emotional issues of the, of the current and past, and and uh, the value that they hold and uh, it just represents all of the issues that they're going to have to push forward and so now the self of this crazy reading that i'm trying to figure out is why we've got this piers morgan kind of attitude about stiff upper lip for the queen and just do everything you can and uh, versus uh, cancel culture as the queen of wands so where we are right now is the self of this issue is that something strong has to get done wands are uh, moving forward, uh, motion, fire, and uh, so the Queen of Wands is a big um, carrier for that baton. And then in the environment of what? In the environment of the King of... I mean, look at the royalty 
in this uh, deck. You've got two, three queens, and now let's bring a king in here. So the environment of this queen of wands, who has a mandate to move things forward in this whole uh, regard, or they'll just keep repeating this uh, scenario for another uh, few hundred years, if they last, is the king of swords. And the king of swords, I'm going to say, it's just truth and justice. And it's plain to see. You can't miss it. This fellow is glaring in yellow. Um, so that's the environment that it's in. And honestly, so yeah, it was always going to be that way for Harry. This is how it was always going to end up. And um, this uh, spread was just loaded with royalty from the beginning to the end. And um, uh, small steps, baby steps. Remember, we're not the be-all uh, of everything. We're just a tiny little speck of it. But anyway, my name's Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Thank you so much for coming along. And don't forget to um, be ready for uh, part two, which is um, we're going to talk about Harry and Meghan. Is it a scandal or a scheme?